Can you guess what all of these are for? Hey everyone, uh, today we're gonna be taking a look at a scrawler box. Uh, so let's pick a pair of scissors. I think we're gonna go for these ones. Okay, don't need all of those. Away they go. Here's the scrawler box and let's just get right into it. Oh, I forgot to do all the... If you want to see more Squalor Box videos, click the link in the card. Thank you so much to Squalor Box for sending me the Squalor Box. And, um, I guess that's it. Okay. Oh, no, I didn't do it. All the... Uh, dang it. It's been a while, but that's another point for the box. Oh my god, I... Ah, you guys! Okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me get this, this out of here. So it looks like the featured artist this month is Casey. Ah, who the funk? Yep, there we go, Casey Golden, who lives in Canada. Nice, that's so cool, Casey. <laughs> Some paper and away it goes. So these are the supplies in the September scrawler box and it looks like watercolor paper and not watercolor paper, but paper that is actually <laughs> watercolor. Um, if you haven't seen this before, which I bet you have, because it's been it's been all over the YouTubes. Um, but if you haven't, it's I I think we'll see we'll we'll have to to test this together. But I think this is paper that you like uh, touch <laughs> with your paintbrush to get colors, and then you can like color with it. Let's do the swatching so we can find out. Haha, the good old swatch book. Oh, you know what? We're out of pages. I mean, I guess I could swatch. I'll swatch on this side. And then next time we'll be out of pages. Oh, you know what though? First I'm gonna try this Jelly Rancher. I've never had one before. And this one is blue, so I am quite excited. Oh my god. So it's blue raspberry flavor. Which I don't know what that means. Um, it tastes like regular raspberry. Very artificial. <laughs> but I like it. It's good. I did not think this through because now I am eating this hard candy and also I can't <laughs> words. I'll be right back. Okay. I am really mad now because I just swatched all of the art supplies and then my computer died and my recording didn't save and I burned. <laughs> Whew. I need a moment. Okay, I'll show you the art supplies again. So this is the Milan paintbrush. It's a size 4, I guess, whatever that means. We have the Pentel RNS mechanical pencil in 0 0.7 and it's a it's it's a mechanical pencil <laughs> and it has an eraser on the other side and I was complaining that it's quite a soft lead that they have in there and that it's not super erasable. But it's okay. It's fine. Next up we have the Winsor and Newton fine liner in 0 0.8. And it's like weirdly long in the tip. Let me grab my Stedler fine liner so we can compare them. Look at that. <laughs> and then I swatched all of the watercolor paper thingies. It says uh, that these are just pigment painted onto paper uh, and then you can like lift the pigment back off of the paper again. Uh, they have these sheets in between. Yeah, so here are the colors with their color names. I'm not really a big fan of color names. I think it's because I've had so many teachers by now uh, teaching color who who keep talking about how color names are useless and they basically are. They're just for for commercial use like light green and sap green <laughs> or there was this one, let me find it, dusk orange, <laughs> which is like uh, it's fun or whatever, but in in an art context, if you're creating an artwork for someone and they say to you, okay, so I would love to have a midnight blue right there on her shirt. And you go, I, what's a midnight blue? I don't know. <laughs> That's not very useful. So it's it's better to use color theory to describe the kind of color that you want in in that sort of situation. So I don't really find color names all that useful. And then we have these super cool, uh, kind of shimmery ones. Weird thing though is that they do not turn into the colors that they have. So this is that one, and this is that one. 
Um, this is kind of, I can kind of see that. But that's, what? And also they don't shimmer after you put them down, which is kind of disappointing. It's kind of makes it a bit gimmicky. And then this one is a violet. It's that one. It's like, <laughs> what? And this one is that one. Very confusing. And then yeah, this one is the magenta and the black is there. Yeah. So I'm sorry that you missed all of that. Um, but whatever, let's, uh, let's do something now. Okay, so the prompt for this month is feeling buggy, which, um, very funny. <laughs> so let's figure out what to draw. Okay, so you know how I always go in and plan everything really meticulously? Today we're just gonna draw on the paper, I think in the spirit of Casey, since she's the featured artist, because she usually just draws on the paper uh, for her videos, so we're just gonna try that and see if <laughs> we can create something good. So feeling buggy, I'm not quite sure what it means. I think it could mean to kind of like feel down or a bit depressed, uh, but then as Casey took it, it can also just be bugs. <laughs> so maybe we will do someone who's turning into a bug, like a, a human, because I don't really know how to draw bugs, so <laughs> I think we might just do that. So what I'm thinking is that we get a bit of a pose going here. You can barely see this, <laughs> but we get a bit of a pose going here. Um, and then, you know what, I'll tell you when we get the pose going. Okay, so now we have a bit of a pose here. Uh, it's someone floating, or I think falling probably, <laughs> because uh, the the idea here is that they're kind of like falling, and then um, to save themselves, this secret buck power <laughs> that they had inside all along bursts out, and this is like their moment that they find out that they have secret buck powers. <laughs> um, I think Casey is rubbing off on me for this one. You know what? Upon further speculation, I think that I want the character to be lower on the page so that we have more space for some wings. And that's gonna make the composition a lot nicer. Okay, so I'm trying to go for a bit of a foreshortened perspective here. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> uh, probably not. I think you can probably barely even see what I'm drawing. Uh, so maybe I'll get back to that later. <laughs> How do we want our character to be dressed is the next question. Hmm. I always hate this part. Maybe I'll just go on Pinterest and find some clothing. We'll just click the Pinterest. And then the first, okay, no, <laughs> I was about to say the first thing we find, but that's like really high fashion, something weird. So maybe not that. Okay. The next thing I see is a long sleeve shirt. And then she's wearing these high-waisted shorts that are kind of cute. I kind of like them. So we'll give her those. I'm wondering if this foot is too much of a change in angle compared to this. Maybe I'll change the angle of this one, actually. <sighs> what would make sense to do with this foot? Maybe she's just like this? But then they kind of tangent, and we don't want tangents. I'll have you know that I am the queen of tangents. I put tangents everywhere. It's like I touch art and tangents happen. So I do want to try and avoid that. I think for the hair, I want to give her like a braid that comes up like floaty float. Maybe on the other side though. Is that too long? Maybe that's a bit long. I do have a tendency, as I think many artists do, to make the hair way too long on my characters. I think it stems from like a childhood thing of being like, well, I'm gonna draw the characters with super long hair because I want super long hair. You know what, we'll try and give her a bun, actually. Uh, which, now that I think about it, kind of gives me Tinkerbell vibes. Um, uh, whoops. Okay, so I think I'm done sketching now, and I'm just picking up some of the excess pigment with my kneaded eraser. This is a trick that I learned from drawing with waffles. <laughs> Beautiful, okay.
And now let's do some line art. Nice, there we go, okay. <laughs> okay, so I thought that since we're already trying to be Casey, we might as well just lean all the way in. So we're doing a breaking the border thing, you know, the thing that Casey loves to do, because I thought it would be fun. So let's grab some of this, some of that, and then a bit of this, and then I guess a lot of water. How do you, I never, see, I never figured out how to do watercolor. So how do you get the water over here? So this might be cheating, but we're going to try it. Just grab some water. Cheat. I guess you can't really cheat in watercolor, so it's probably fine, right? Ugh, okay, this is a mess. <laughs> okay, so that's nice and whatever, but I didn't want it to gradient, so how do we do that? Okay, so now comes the, the scary part, the gradient part. I think... What I need to do is dilute the blue, probably, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> it's a bit splotchy, but it kind of looks like a gradient. Maybe if I pull some of the darker blue a bit further up here. I think I did a bit of a better job over here, actually, but then the problem is that it doesn't match what's happening over there, uh, and I don't know how to make it, so... <laughs> What if I put some water? Can I lift some of the color? Is that how it works? Yeah, no, not really. Okay. I think this is probably as good as it's gonna get. And that's okay. I think I'm... I'm <laughs> I just squirted water everywhere. Oh no! Uh, why do I do this? Why am I like this? Leave a comment down below. Tell me. Why am I like this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So now we're gonna do the inside of the wings. You know what, at the risk of speaking too soon, I think that I'm starting to see the appeal of watercolors. Uh, because in the past I've never really been much into watercolors. Uh, they were just, like it never turned out nicely when I tried. Uh, but I think that maybe my problem was that I didn't have the right supplies, like the my paints were too cheap. But right now I'm actually having a good time, <laughs> um, and my paper's not warping, and the paints are looking really nice. So maybe, oh my god, uh, mistake. <laughs> Don't talk and paint at the same time. You'll make mistakes. I guess what I was trying to say was just that I am enjoying this, and it's turning out pretty okay, actually. Oh, and now for the fun part, we can grab a bit of red. I've already done it here, but <laughs> I'm gonna do it on the fingers. Oh, that's a lot of red. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I can remove some of it. Da -da 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 -da. And then we blend it out. I am really liking the way that this is turning out, oddly enough. That's um, not something you hear often. <laughs> oh my god, no, no, no. Mm. Okay, the hair is bleeding into the face. Um, why? <laughs> like, oh, I love the way that this is turning out. Wait, <laughs> mistakes were made. Okay, so it's probably not dry yet, but I want to add some stripes to this shirt. I think I want more orange, more, more. Let's just uh call that done for now. And we'll let this dry while I have lunch. Okay, so I think it is dry now and we're ready to go ahead and do the black detailing of the wings. Ooh, I don't know if this might be a mistake to fill so much black next to her face. Ooh, 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 we'll have to see. 
there we go. I'm not sure that I love it with the black, but uh, that's how it is now, so <laughs> yeah, but that's the artwork for this scrawler box. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and I hope that you like the art. I can, I think I like how it turned out. Uh, I think I, yeah, as I said, I ruined it with the black, but otherwise I do really like how it turned out, and I had fun, which is the most important thing. A, a quick congrats to Casey for being the featured artist. Wow, amazing. That's it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you later.